let's talk a minute about why it's important to make a close shot. Now, I mean, the obvious reason here is we're looking to make a perfect shot, a good, a good solid kill shot. Um, I mean, that's the obvious reason. I mean, it's uh, in today's day and age, we don't need to survive on this game that we're killing. I mean, this is a recreation thing, a recreation thing. Um, you know, and, and ethics plays a lot more of a role today than it did, you know, back when the ancients were doing this to get by. This is how they made a living. Um, and I discussed a lot of this in the ethics video that I did, uh, but I wanted to go into a little bit more detail as to why it is important to make sure you have good close shots because there's variables that, that occur in the woods that aren't going to happen on the practice range uh, that can make a big difference in whether your shot is a perfect kill shot or a wounding shot or a lost animal. Um, you know, and it really does stem back to people trying to shoot as far as they possibly can. You know, people think that, that shooting a deer really far makes them a good hunter. Um, you know, and it's not just a compound guys, it's it's traditional guys or primitive guys too, it doesn't matter. We see we do see it a lot again with the with the compound guys are getting into it and they want to shoot as far as they possibly can and they think that they're a good bow hunter if they can kill a deer at fifty yards with a bow or kill a an elk at eighty yards with a bow or whatnot and it's and you're you're really being irresponsible shooting that far because of these variables that happen. Now I know there's people that's gonna say, Well I killed a deer at fifty yards with a compound bow or you know, I killed a, a bighorn sheep at 100 yards or, or whatnot. And, yeah, you can kill them. And you see people on TV doing that all the time, too. But it gives people this false hope of thinking that they can do it all the time and be ethical, that you're going to be able to make these shots. But you really can't. There's so many variables to it. It doesn't matter how good of a shot you are. There's too many variables that happen over that distance. And, you know... For compounders, you know, I'm talking about these 50-yard deer shots and even more. And for recurve guys, I'm talking about 30-yard shots and primitive guys, even 20, 25-yard shots. They're just a little bit too far. Um, <clears throat> some of the variables that happen is, you know, when you're shooting at, at a deer target, it doesn't matter how many times you shoot at that target, it's never going to move. It's never going to react to your shot. And I know we like to think that we can assume what the animal is going to do when we react you know typical you know people that shoot loud bows compounds recurves that are really noisy the, they aim underneath them so the animal drops and they think that that solves the problem that that's the solution or that they need to shoot a fast enough arrow that it, it is there fast enough before they drop and that does help some but that you just can't I mean you know we're talking like a few seconds of arrow flight time when you're shooting really far that deer reacts to that um, you know, just because the deer may drop um, doesn't mean that if it's far enough away, it could also start running. Uh, I've seen that before. I saw somebody in person shoot a whitetail at about 45 or 50 yards with a compound. When he shot, the deer reacted to the sound of the bow, and it was facing to the right um, when he shot. And by the time the arrow got there, that deer had completely turned around and was running left by the time the arrow got there and he just happened to make a good shot through the lungs and he killed the deer very fast but it was luck I mean what would have happened if had that deer not turned around had just continued to go straight he'd have shot it in the guts or shot it in the hind quarters or something and that's how you lose deer and that's not being an ethical shot um, you know so it doesn't matter how accurate you are at a certain range there's that variable that the deer is going to react to it um, and another variable is, is things that get in the way of the shot. The people say, oh, well, this is an isolated incident. It doesn't happen, but it does. Uh, a guy that I hunted with, he practiced at 50 yards all the time. He said that he, you know, he could kill a deer at 50 yards. Well, he can kill a deer target at 50 yards every time. And I tried to explain that that deer moves um, and that things happen. I mean, just chaotic things happen when you're in the woods. Things don't go according to plan. And... It's important that we eliminate as much of that as we possibly can. And in the, in the instance that I'm thinking of, a, a story with this guy, he was a beginner hunter, 
and he set his stand up so he could shoot 50, 60 yards in every direction. So when any anywhere a deer came through his area, he could shoot at it. And he was telling me the story of this deer that he shot at 50 yards. He ended up losing the deer. He got shot at, he lost it, ran into the swamp, never saw it again. Um, but he said he missed it at 40 yards, and it ran to 50 yards, and then he hit it. Uh, and I said, if you missed it at 40 yards, what on earth makes you think that you could have killed it at 50 yards? He says, well, I practice at 50 yards all the time. I, can, I, could, I know I could hit it. And I said, well, then why did you miss it at 40 yards? And he says, well, I hit a twig, and it deflected my arrow. But see, that's one of those variables that I'm talking about. It's like nobody means to hit a twig. And, yeah, it may not happen all the time, but these things happen. These are variables that the further your shot is, the more chances that you're going to hit a twig, that wind is going to take your arrow, that you're going to get some sort of odd planing from your broadhead, um, or that the deer is simply going to react and run off. And, and when he took that 50-yard shot, he said, well, you know, the deer was standing there looking around wondering what happened because I had just missed it. So um, I knew he was going to jump the string, so I aimed just below him at 50 yards. And when I shot, he jumped a string, and he started to, he actually started to run, and it ended up shooting him in the guts. He said, had it not ran, it would have been a good shot. Well, that's great. So he's a great shot with his bow, but that doesn't mean anything because that deer is that variable that you cannot account for. I mean, you have no idea whether that deer is going to run, whirl, jump the string, not jump the string. And when those shots are so far, and it's not just the compounds, it's shooting a, a deer with a recurve at 30 yards or a, a, a primitive bow at 25 yards or, or any of these things, that there are these variables that you cannot control. So it does not matter how good of a shot you are uh, when you cannot control these things. And I mean, yeah, you can kind of control some of these limb hits and stuff like that but by not shooting through a lot of tight brush but there's always something there and the further the shot is the more opportunity for disaster um, there was a point in time you know when I really thought that shooting far was what made you a good hunter that that by by making these long shots that I was finally a good hunter and I and I realized that I was an irresponsible hunter that what makes you a good hunter is the ability to watch a deer feed towards you, turn broadside at 30 yards and say, I'm not going to shoot because I know I set up good and he's going to, and it's going to come closer to me. And you have patience and you wait for that deer to get 20 yards and he turns broadside and you say, nope, it's not time yet. It's going to get closer and you're patient and you've set up your stands or your blind or your wherever you're at where you know you're confident that this deer is going to come by. And you know what? Maybe... Maybe it doesn't come by, but that's that's being a responsible hunter. You don't take that long shot, and you wait till it comes all the way in. And I mean, this happened to me, the same scenario where I had a deer at 30 yards coming to me, and a lot of times deer feed like this in a zigzag pattern. So the term broadside, people think, well, it's leaving, you know. And I used to think that when I was just getting started, a deer would be coming right towards you, and it would show up through the brush, and you're like, all right, it's coming towards me. And as soon as it turns broadside, you think, you freak out, it's leaving, i got to shoot at it right now. Well, a lot of people don't realize this is the deer feed this way, and then they stop and they feed back this way, and they stop and they feed back this way, and they'll continue to come your direction. Well, the first time they turn broadside, people freak out and they need to take the shot. And then a lot of times they make a far shot and, you know, shoot through things that they shouldn't or variables happen. They make a bad shot or a miss or, or whatnot. And, uh, again, you know, when I'm, this deer turned broadside at 30 yards, and I said, no, I'm not going to shoot, and, and it fed its way in and stopped it. A 20 give or take and was broadside and I wanted to shoot it but I knew it just it, it wasn't the time I needed to be patient and I let that deer get all the way to seven yards and I made a perfect slam dunk seven yard double lung shot and the deer died within 30 yards and that's what it means to be a good hunter it's not being able to, to make a good shot at a far distance it's being able to allow that animal to come really close and make a good good ethical shot and I mean I talked about the variables of things getting in the way and animals reacting um, but there's also that people train themselves especially with these new big targets that we see you know oh, we're gonna hunt for big bucks so I'm gonna have a big buck target you know but you're training yourself to hit an abnormally sized deer or the people are shooting at paper plates and thinking if I get them all in there I'm doing it and you're training yourself to hit a deer not to efficiently kill a deer because if you lay a paper plate over a doe's kill zone 
most of that paper plate is not in a double lung or a hard shot. It's actually a bad shot. Uh, so people are training themselves to simply hit a deer, not to kill one. And, and even if you shrink that, that kill zone up and then change the angle and shoot at a deer at an angle, you've changed that kill zone altogether. And what I've kind of found is if you take something about the size of a baseball and put it right in the middle of the kill zone, just about any variation of angle that that deer is standing, you can shoot through both lungs. But that's about it, is about the size of a baseball. Because if, you, um, if you're aiming directly on broadside and the animal is um, on the ground at your level, and perfectly broadside, then the kill zone is a little bit bigger because you're shooting straight across. But if you're up in a stand shooting down, you could hit perfectly in the middle of the kill zone and shoot right through this lung and actually go underneath the opposite lung and only get a one lung hit. Or if the animal is quartering away and you shoot directly on the side uh, where the lung would be, you've, maybe you've got the first lung but you missed the second lung because you shot too far in front of it. Or in reverse, that perhaps you shoot too far back, miss the first lung, and you shoot the second lung. Um, you know, yes, you can kill a deer with a one lung hit, but I mean, we're talking about, you know, trying to be a lot more ethical. And not only that, but it's, you'd be amazed at how easy it is to miss the lungs altogether and just make a bad shot. So, obviously, the closer that your shots are, um, the less room for error in your shooting is. And I mean, keep in mind too, when your adrenaline's going and you're, you've got a deer standing there, you're not shooting as good as you would be um, shooting at a target. I mean, people say, oh, I get better when I'm under pressure like that. Perhaps some people do. The majority of people, they get a little shaky and their groups will, are gonna open up a little bit. So, um, you know, keeping in mind the closer that animal is, the better shot, the smaller your, your accuracy is going to be and you need it to be as tight as you can be because you know all it takes is for that deer to move a little bit to one side or another and that kill zone is now off to the side and it doesn't take but one two three inches to make a bad shot I mean you can be one inch away from the lungs and it still be a bad shot and had you just been a little bit closer you could have gotten in there and made a good ethical shot I would say in my opinion, and this is my opinion from experience, and I know everybody's accuracy changes, and again, it's not about how good you shoot, it's about how the deer reacts. In my opinion, I think that the limitations for compound hunters, for the deer's reaction and everything, should be about a 25 yard shot max. I think traditional guys should be about 17, 18 yards max and primitive guys need to be about 15 yards max. That's my personal opinion on deer's reaction to things and how accurate we can be and that kind of thing. And of course that's going to vary a little bit person to person. Um, and although I think I, I can be very efficient and ethical at 15 yards, I still much prefer to get a deer at 8 yards before I shoot it. I just, I want the close shot because the least amount of things that can go wrong, the happier I am with it. I want an easy shot. To be a good hunter, I want an easy shot, not to brag about making a difficult shot.